Today we're going to make a butternut squash chili. It is vegetarian and vegan and it's so rich and warming and hearty that you won't even miss the meat. Let's get into it. So butternut squash chili, super easy. The hardest part is going to be cutting your butternut squash, which you don't have to do as intensely as I do, but um, the option is there for you, so I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, let's start with our onion. So go ahead and cut in half, cut off the top and the tush. Just go ahead and give it a peel here. I'm gonna use about like one medium onion, one large to medium onion. Depends on how much you like onions. I love onions, so I am in the large onion camp. The bigger the better. We want a medium dice, so I'm gonna go ahead and just you know kind of slice through the sides, give it you know maybe three slices. And then I am going to, you know, cut sections and then I'm going to cut the other direction. And then what we have is large medium dice. All right, cool, cool. Repeat. Cool. Now, that's done. We have nothing in our pot so far. Pick yourself a medium-ish pot, um, something with a decent amount of surface area to get all the things. And then we're gonna put about mm, two tablespoons of oil in the bottom. You can do one. We've got our oil in there and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on kind of low, um, just like really low. Right now, we are just kind of prepping the things. If you would like to, you know, hold off on cooking until you have everything prepped, that's cool too. But this is like a weeknight, right? You can like pull this together quickly if you if you want to. So I want to make sure that you know you can see that it can be done start to finish like this. How to cut a butternut squash. You're like, what is this thing? It is so huge. First step, take off the paper because let me tell you, that tastes terrible. Step two, cut off the top. Just give it a nice, it helps if you use a heavy, sharp knife. This is heavy, it has not been sharp for about a month now. Just being honest. Uh, and then cut off the tush. Look at that. Top and tush in the trash. All right. Now, I personally like to cut off the bottom part, you know, where it like, starts to get bulbous and like, you know, the booty comes out. I like to cut that off because I find it easier to peel that way. So go ahead and cut that bit off and so you're left with two pieces. This is also how you're gonna cut it into nice dice. So it is easier to just do it now. Now grab yourself a peeler and we are going to peel our squash. I'm gonna do it on parchment. Um, all right, now I find it easier to kind of peel like this. I like my, my Y peeler. Um, you're almost peeling it like an apple in a way, uh, at least the, the tush part. Whatever is easiest for you and however it's easiest to hold, that's what you should do. Because the thing is about butternut squash is, it, is that it starts to release this kind of like, mm, let's call it sliminess. <laughs> that sounds gross, but just it just does, okay? Uh, but it, it, it makes it kind of a little hard to hold, which is another reason why it's nice to pre kind of cut it in half because then you don't have to try and slice it in half when it is gooby. We've peeled the butt and we are ready to start on the top. Now I like to kind of peel this in half, like halves. So I do one half this way and then I flip it and I do the other half, okay? And this side of course is a little harder to hold because of the, you know, goopiness. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, bam. Hey, voila. Now we're ready to cut. Ish. So, <clears throat> let's start with the hard part. The tush. So we have to cut this in half. We have to deal with the seeds. You can scrape these out. You can pick them out. You can uh, pop them in the oven and then give them a little toasty. Maybe a little toss in olive oil with some like salt. Yum. Cool. I don't have any patience for that today. So I'm just gonna scoop out the seeds. All right, so what we're gonna do here is, I want a medium dice, right? So you want all of your pieces to be about the same 
size and shape because you want them to cook evenly. So what that means is it's a little tricky with a butternut because obviously we've got weird size, you know, shapes and sizes going on over here and you're like, how is this going to work? It's going to be fine. So we're cutting tranches, basically is what they're called, big slabs. Um, and we're going to do the same thing with this guy over here. Wow, he is just having a day. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, basically. I'm going to cut large sections down like a so. You want to kind of keep in mind that, you know, the size that you're going to cut that and you want to cut this about the same size. Now it's got a weird center section that obviously was hollow. So just carry on. Don't stress about it. Now I'm going to do these center sections on their own because I find it easier. So you're, you're just kind of, you know, cutting them about the same size that you cut the other side, the, the tush, and look at that. Perfect little cubes. Ah! Love it. Wow. So this is a big squash. <laughs> My goodness. My goodness. Measure out four cups. Does it have to be perfect? No. Are they rounded? Yes. I know I said four, but like I'm feeling like I want it to be a little bit more. All right, it's like about five cups. If you cut them smaller, it doesn't matter. As long as you have enough liquid to cover and the ratios aren't crazy, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, garlic also in the pan. So just low, no browning, because if the onions are browning, that means that the garlic is also browning. And you know what I don't love the flavor of? burnt garlic because it's nasty so anyways so we are just sweating this out we're just you know we want it to be nice and we want the onions to be melty before we add all the other things and it is time to add all these spices so I'm going to cook my spices now this is what's going to like bloom them and give great rich flavor to the chili without adding you know more than necessary so I love, um, what I'm trying to use is <laughs> New Mexican chili powder, which is kind of like ancho chili powder, but um, I don't have enough New Mexico left, so I'm just going to have to use a combination of New Mexican and ancho chili powder. So we're gonna do three tablespoons total. Um, and then I'm going to do an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. And a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. Now they just kind of, I love, cinnamon and ginger with and like pumpkin spice with my butternut squash it's like it's just it's a flavor combination that i just love it kind of gives it a warmth and an extra <laughs> an extra depth to the chili and i love that and then we're going to take that and we are going to stir it up now if you don't have enough oil in your pot to kind of coat the spices then they will just like burn and they won't bloom so you do need to make sure that you have some oil in your pot cool we got our base layer going on and then I'm going to start adding in my accoutrements. I've got kidney beans. Now I've rinsed and drained these because I don't want my chili to taste like the, the bean liquid. You know, if you don't care or you like it, like that's cool. It, it doesn't matter. So these are black beans. In they go. And then we've got a whole can of tomato paste. And go ahead and add, um, we're gonna do about three quarters of this. This is vegetable stock. So it is about three cups of stock. Um, I do choose a low sodium. Uh, you can make your own, but um, I don't actually have time for that. So here we are. All right, so I've turned it up to medium and I'm going to let it kind of come to a boil and then I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer it, depending on how large you cut your butternut squash, it, that's how long it's gonna take to cook. So if it's pretty small, then it'll take closer to an hour. Mine, some of mine are a little large, you know, I don't know, I guess I was chit-chatting. And um, it's probably gonna take closer to two. But the smaller you cut your butternut squash, the faster dinner is on the table. Just a little PSA for you uh, and your fams. So I'll check back in, I'll show you what's up as we go and yeah. Okay. And 
we are just going to give it a quick stir to kind of show you what's going on in here. So obviously it's nice and thick and then you just want to make sure that the, um, the squash are cooked. Like I said, mine were kind of chubby. So go ahead and just kind of like poke them with a cake tester and they should go in really smoothly, like without any sort of resistance at all. Like really just like, like butter, tempered butter, butter, not fridge butter. It definitely needs a little bit of salt, um, but I'm enjoying the heat. Really, the salt depends on your stock that you choose. Also, the flavor is really going to depend on the stock that you choose. So make sure that you choose a flavor that is just that of stock that you like, right? Um, and or make your own. I'll do a video on that soon. Promise. So go ahead and just we're gonna let this simmer just a little bit more, just to kind of let the the salt kind of meld and mix and mingle, um, and then we are ready to serve this. I know, it's exciting, mostly because it's lunchtime. Super stoked. All right, Oof, we've given her a little time to chill and let those flavors meld. I'll show you what I've got going on in here, because I'm pretty stoked about it. Oh yes. If you found that your chili is a little looser than you'd like it to be, that is totally fine. You can just kind of take off the top and then crank up the heat a little bit. Not so much that you burn it, but just to let some of that um, moisture evaporate. Dish up a nice, generous serving of this. Ooh, girl. I just want to hold it for a second. It is so cold in here, and this is so warm and wonderful. Mm. Yes. All right. Anyways, as we were, it's time to dry. Obviously, I've got my cup of soup ready over here and my spoon, and I am super ready to dig in. Mmm, yum. It's rich and hearty and super warming, and the chili powder is perfect. It's like a little heat, but not too much. Of course, you could bump it up if you wanted, dash some cayenne in there, really just pow. But I love the butternut squash and the, the beans. It all just melds together, and it's like rich and thick and filling, just like your favorite meaty chili, but without any meat. Sometimes I like to put a dollop of sour cream in there to like cut the cut the heat. It adds a creaminess. Um, often though, what I actually do is I put Greek yogurt in there instead. So you get the zing and the tartness like you would with sour cream, but without all of the fat. 